Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another free book for you today. Jumping the gun a little bit for next month. Uh, the Raiders is one of the most popular books on, in the game this year. Uh, so I decided to give that out. The book itself is about two hours long. So I have to break it up into two parts. Like I said I got eye form and shotgun all in one video. So other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Next up, we got the PA Deep Cross. This play here, I'm just going to streak. Uh, the uh, the X route, and then I'm going to put Olsen here on a drag, and that's it. So now I really have a high low across the board, um, as you can see right there. I mean, Olsen was the guy that got open because it was a man coverage. This isn't going to be great against man coverage. This is really a levels play against zone. Um, you would think that, that that B route would beat that, but it really doesn't. So like I said, Wave has got across the field. I had to throw it a little bit early uh, due to um, the pressure. But like I said, this is all about, you know, this is just going to be a, um, a zone being played. And that B route, I mean, your, your user opponent, that's a really rare route. So your user opponent's not necessarily going to follow that. They're probably going to follow these drags across the field. They'll probably follow the tight end because there's really going to be nothing else in their area. If they drop out to the receiver, I'd be surprised. Like I said, I mean, there's just, there's no real, no real man coverage. You see how tight the man coverage is. So you really don't have that. This is not a man play by any means, but like I said, for zones, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get this, I mean, you're going to get this pretty much every time because that's such a late developing route and a good route at that. Pretty good inside run. I mean, it's just like a cutback run. You know what I'm saying? You just have to, once you get that fullback to get that plant, you just got to cut back. But it looks like you're starting off over here and then boom, you just switch back over. There, there, you know, I didn't quite do it good enough. And run it as is here. Like I said, cut back. You know what I'm saying? Just cut back against that fullback block. You got it again. Like I said, start off to that side, cut back. Oh man, he's just going to spring me. And I did too much bumping around, but you can see just right up the gut. You know, to me, this is definitely one of the better inside runs, especially if people don't know about. It. Sometimes you got to bounce it out, though. Follow the flow. I mean, there, you know, I couldn't cut back like I wanted to. It was too busy. So I'll just take what I can get. But if I can get space inside, I mean, look at that. Like that's, if there is space inside, it's a really easy run. So right here, I mean, I, you know, I'll take that outside. You know what I'm saying? There's just, just the blocking on this is phenomenal. And I had to do a little bit of improvisation to get a big play, but it's a really nice run. Those are going to have the right personnel back in there. So here we go. Once again, cutting across that fullback spot. Wherever he lands, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Wherever he, wherever that fullback hits, I'm cutting right across his ass. So anytime your opponent likes to spread out, try to stop those outside runs, you hit him with this inside run. I mean, this is just, this is clutch. Next up, we got the double outs. This is probably going to be best run against a cover three. So it looks like you essentially have the same route on both sides, but the one on the on the right, the B route, is definitely better. And you're gonna see, um, it just it just just breaks a little bit sharper. This is like a, a kind of a glitchy route that was a couple years back. Um, on the left side, what you have is essentially the route the route that they modified it to. But you can see, I mean, this guy he's just gonna get outside. Whether it's cover two or cover three, I'm pretty sure he's gonna beat it. Uh, pretty much whatever the scenario and that's really the only route I mean you see it's just it's so glitchy the guy he just I don't know what happens to him he just <laughs> he just bounces off him like a ping pong machine or something but uh, it's pretty money so here we go again like I said, really easy you're stealing 10 yards 12 yards every time if you do it really if you do it timed well enough you can catch and run for a little bit more let's see if I can do that like I said right there I'm still in I'm still in bounds enough to get 15 16 17 yards no, the other route, I mean, the, the A route's pretty good. But I don't think, you know, the way, if you call this play, it's going to be because you want to hit this guy. This play's too too easy money to, to just ignore, especially in a cover three scenario. Like I said, if I can make a guy miss, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I could house that, you know what I'm saying? This play can also get outside of cover four. Um, it's just going to be, you know, not definitely not as much space, but you can see the throw's there. So whether it's cover three or cover four, 
you're going to have that opportunity. But you really have to hold it longer. If it's cover four, you really got to hold it until they get to that boundary. You know what I'm saying? They won't cover all the way out to the boundary. Even a fast linebacker like Deion Jones. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. So, I mean, there's a couple different ways to run this. I'd say flipping it, motioning over this receiver would probably be my favorite. As long as it's not a man coverage, you don't want to bring a receiver over in a man coverage. But other than that, I mean, it's just a really good play to the sideline. You might run a little resistance right there, as you can see. But uh, I should be fast enough to get outside. As long as you have your fastest back running it. You can run it as is. Um, you can run it shallow. Uh, like I said right here, you have a man, so I don't, I don't want to run that. But if it, if it is a man, it actually gives you a benefit the other way. So I'll just flip it back to normal. Uh, it really depends. I mean, if your opponent's running a lot of man, you'll know without having to motion a guy over. But if you don't know, once you motion him over, it gives it away. Now I can just go shallow side, which, you know, I actually almost messed up there because I was trying to snap it so quick. But you can say, like I said, you, you, there's no outside containment anymore uh, to run it the, uh, the normal way. So, you know, that's going to be important. Like I said, if the guy doesn't follow, run it like this. And I actually messed it up, but that's okay. I forgot to flip it, but I still got a big play. So, like I said, this is a really good play. Even motioning over the guy, um, you know, just brings the corner back in. That's why I got outside there. So, let's go ahead and run it one more time. I got a feeling it's going to be my best one. Oh, man. I just won't do it. And I would have been going there. Uh, but a good play. You can also motion over Olsen if you want to. I mean, it doesn't really change the look too much, but it can help you get that edge. So, I mean, as far as the motion game goes, um, you really have um, quite, a, quite a few options. Let's go and let's do this one more time. Motion over Olsen. Get that, get that. You know, I feel like it's a, they're a little bit closer together. That, that to me, is the benefit. And then, like I said, you're just getting really easy runs. And I don't know how I juke through those guys, but almost housed it. Another another big run. Next up, we got the halfback sweep. So I would flip this play, motion over this guy. As long as it's not a man coverage. Like right here, it's a man coverage. In this scenario, it would obviously be better to keep the play as is. I got to motion him back, though. You know, which you, know, might not, you might not have time for the game. But I'm going to motion him back. Like I said, now you want to run it like this. If you know your opponent's running a lot of man coverage before you call that, this is obviously going to be the best way to run it. Um, you know, run it away from the extra defenders. But if it's a zone, obviously motion him over. Like I said, there we know it's a man now. <laughs> but I'm just going to run it anyway because, like I said, it's still a good play even if you make that mistake. Say you don't have time to change it. It's still a good run. You see about 10 or plus, 10 plus. But I would like to get a zone coverage so I can... <laughs> So I can show that one time at least. You know what I'm saying? I'm motion snapping too, which you know you're not always gonna do. But it, to me, it's obviously better against man. Here go, here go. This play here, this is one of my, you know, more favorite ways to do it is to flip it. Uh, and essentially it works like a trap play, as you can see right there. I mean, I, if I would have got outside a little quicker, I would have beat that guy for much more. You can run it as is, um, you know, but like especially in a scenario like this where the safety dropped down. Now I have a cover three safety in the box. Um, flipping it to the, to the other side and then waiting for 70 to get through um, is really going to be the best way to do it, as you can see right there. I mean, I really just have to make one guy miss pretty much every time and then I'm housing it. Here is a scenario, like I said, I mean, this cover through safety might dictate differently. I don't necessarily want to run into that. But you can see, I mean, you know, other than that, it's a really solid run play. Typically when you're running the ball, you want to have the outside shoulder, like right here. I have the outside shoulder uh, where my blocker has the outside shoulder at tight end. But this run play scenario, it's the exact opposite. In this run play scenario, you want to attack your opponent when they have the outside edge like right here that defender's wide of my left tackle that's how I want it because I want to bust it inside so basically you're using typical running principles against itself and then you can get on average at least a five yard run if not more so like right here he's outside that's what I want because this guy's gonna let him kick outside I mean that's the point of the run as you can see right there 70 just didn't get the block but still a really good play so since it's an inside run, I mean, it's not an outside run, so I don't want outside right, containment. Right, right. I want them to have outside containment so I can use it against them. You can see right there, when we get a really, you know, it's just easy, 5 to 10 yards every time and with, the, with the capability of breaking one if you get one guy to miss. Do this again. 
Oh man, that guy, that, that safety filled the whole lot. But I still got five though. Like I said, it's gonna get that every time. Do this one more time. And like I said, we're just basically sprinting to the sideline. Easy 10, 15 yards every time. That's the possibility of it. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. If it's a man coverage, run it as is. But if it's a zone coverage, flip it back to the receiving side. You know, pretty, pretty good, a pretty good blocking edge pretty much every time. Ultimately, I think this play's, play works best against zone. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you're pretty much just going to get outside. These stretches, you're going to get outside pretty much every time. I like this play. I mean, you're pretty much running close to the line of scrimmage, so if you have to take a loss, you're not taking much of a loss. I find these jet sweep plays work a little bit better when there's a receiver on this side to block. Um, but you can see, and it's still a good play. You know, it's something to mix in. This is just a traditional run play. Hopefully, it'll trick 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 your opponent into um, to chasing that uh, that jet sweep play or the jet the actual you know the motion. Next up out of the I form Y off, we have the P A F L hitch. This round on the outside is really deadly against man coverage, so all I'm gonna do block everybody, let them run that streak, and um, you know that's just I, I don't know man that he he beat that by like 10 yards. Let's go ahead and let's watch the replay on that. You're not always going to get this look, but for whatever reason, like these guys just, they just take a, a bad angle and just like fall over. <laughs> it's one of the glitchier routes that I've noticed this year, especially against man. Next up, we got the PAPA -PA cross. <laughs> Some interesting routes here. I like to motion out this guy because it's a play action, so I can't really motion out the other one. But you can see, I mean, he's running a really unique route. Um, that's going to get open in a lot under a lot of coverages. Both of these routes should really get open under a lot of coverages. Um, and then you have Samuel. That's a really good man beater route. Uh, but like I said, this here, I mean, this is like basically a, a, a you know an out route. I mean, the fullback keeps fumbling. I should have put in a real fullback or a real running back, I should say. I mean, this guy is probably just a blocking back. But you can see how effective he is, and he's not even really like I say, he's not even really a, 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 that type of player. So like I said, that in route two, if you time that, there's definitely going to be a hole, especially in zones, but more, more especially against man coverage is what Samuel's running. Um, but uh, this this play, this route really has, or this play really has a, a very unique um, type of type of set. And like I said, you're working the outside so much, your opponent's going to start paying attention to that and forget about the inside receiver like the Samuel coming across the middle. Let's do this one more time. I said that motion is really what makes the play. And like I said, this guy coming across the middle. You could also put the tight end on a drag. I mean, a lot of times that'll help pull coverage back um, for McCaffrey catch and run. So like I said, I'll do this one more time. I find it works best with him just a little bit over. And then, you know, he's just wide. Like, right here, they're just leaving him open. <laughs> so I'll take that. I Man, it's 10 yards right there, 12 yards right there. Yeah, you're basically, you know, if, if this route doesn't get open, you're just waiting for the B route. Because the B route will typically be, um, you know, like I said, he'll, when he, by the time he gets to the center of the field, it's usually wide open. If you leave the fullback in, I find a lot of times that McCaffrey um, will get in, but it's, you know, it's really the same as, like I said, that's the most consistent route, man or zone. Next up, out of the I form Y off, we have the PAX dig. So this play here, I like to put um, Samuel here, just motion him across, and I find like he's going to be, you know, whether it's man, cover two, whatever, a lot of times he just beats to the sideline. Uh, for a big play. I don't even know what that was. I almost ran out of bounds. I thought I wasn't going to score, but you can see how that's just a really glitchy setup. And it really doesn't seem to matter with this man cover two, whatever. Your check down's going to be um, going to be more coming o coming over the middle, but a lot of times this, this route typically gets open against most things. So you're really not going to need it. Uh, like I said, here's a, a tight man coverage. That's about the only thing, um, you know, that looked like probably a cover two. 
Uh, but it was just, you know, you just couldn't get the separation. But uh, like I said, motion's got cost. Whatever this is, cover two, cover three, he's probably going to get outside of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, oh man, I could have got the sideline there too. So, you know, you just, you just have, this play here is pretty glitchy. It's going to, it's going to steal on most things here we go we'll cover one so i know you know it doesn't really beat cover one too good so i'm typically going to have to wait on the uh the, the x or the, the x route to come across the middle you see that's tight coverage too but he still makes the play this isn't the best man play so you really probably should just audible out of it into something man based because that's this is not really what this is but if it's a, if it's a zone coverage of any type you know like i said two three whatever you know what i'm saying you, you're gonna you're gonna be it just like this cover cover four it doesn't really matter it's not gonna be a home run every time it's typically gonna be a home run against cover two but let's go ahead and let's run it against cover four so i can show you what i'm talking about um you're pretty much uh you know get rid of that play that, that play action because this is going to be a quick throw required as you can see, like I almost got outside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get outside of it on cover four as well. I, mean, I got outside enough to make the play, but I mean, I, I mean, get outside enough to take it to the house. So let's see if we can do that. I feel like it's there. Oh, it's oh, yeah, he did. He got outside. <laughs> he took a bad angle and he got outside and took it to the house. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. So let's try it one more time. Like I said, take away that play action because that just messes up the timing of everything. Let him get set. We're past leading and bulleting, by the way. Oh, almost, almost. But that's okay. That's okay. You can see, like I said, cover two, cover three. That's the, that's what, what you're going to expect, and then cover two, a home run. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. This play here, you can run this a couple different ways. I find it's best to motion in this receiver because a lot of times it'll bring the cornerback in as well, and that's typically what you want since you're trying to get to the outside. Also finds best since the cornerback on the other side is already in to just motion, just flip the play and run to that side. As you can see, he's closer to the line of scrimmage, making it easier to get to the outside. You have less blocking, but you got a better position. Like I said, you can see here, I mean, it's just, you know, I just have to lead those, I just have to aim my blockers at that cornerback and that, and that linebacker, and I'm essentially just going to be able to sprint past pretty much every time. If I make one guy miss or that block holds up long enough, I can make it pretty much to the house. Next up, out of the I from H wing, we have the flood shot. This play is a pretty simple setup. Your A and your B tight ends are going to be your your zones, and then if you have a man, uh, the X route's going to be best. Although realistically, it's not a great option. You can see right there, um, you know, it's it's just not as consistent. But your your tight ends are pretty good. That's that's just you know that scenario. Yeah, and this is a man. Like I said, I have a you know a little bit of a speed advantage, so I can I can throw to the to the drag. But typically, um, you know, this play is really about the A route on a zone scenario. Uh, that's going to be your best option, and your B route will be really good against zones as well. But if you get caught in a man, as I accidentally quick throw it. But if you get caught in a man, you're gonna you're gonna want to go to um, to the uh, the X route. That'll be your best bet. Uh, depending on you know if you can throw it in that break, you'll have a pretty good a pretty good shot at uh, completing it. But uh, it's really once again these are all timing throws, especially when it comes to man. Next up we got the halfback counter weak. This play right here, there's no adjustments needed. Um, you're really just reading one guy, uh, and then you're pretty much getting one on one for a, for a house call. Uh, but you're just reading the defensive end. The defensive end right in front of you, whether he crashes outside or whether he, whether he hesitates like he did right there. Uh, but once once you decide what they're doing, if he hesitates, you take it outside. If he crashes outside, you take it inside. It's that simple. And then the blocking on this play is just phenomenal. Like right there, he took it outside. I probably could have I could probably could have stretched that to the, to the sideline and got a little bit more. But this is definitely a play. You know, like I said, there he hesitates, lets the blocker come to him and take him out, and I get a nice easy run. But uh, like I said, there he's outside, so I'm gonna go inside, and I'm just stretching it to the boundary. You know what I'm saying? It's so it's just a single read, and then you're pretty much getting blocking to, to spring it. So reading that end, he crashes inside. I'm gonna run right up, up right inside past, him. easy run, easy run every time. Reading that end one more time. He crashes outside, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go inside. I get 90 there to, to spring me. Uh, gets a, gets a good block. And then the rest is just all Christian McCaffrey, baby, as he gets a big run. One more time. Like I said, this is capable of explosive results. 
if it uh, if it comes, you know, I'm getting 10 yards pretty consistently, but it's capable of so much more. It's going to be a home run play, uh, depending on how the blocking sets up. But this play has huge home run capabilities if the blocking's there. Like it was right there. I got that guy springing me. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just it's it's capable of really big runs. Next up, we got the PA counter shot. Uh, this play can be running into a bunch of different things, but it'll also be a really good cover four beater. No real adjustments needed for the cover four. Um, you have two really good under routes, but uh, like I said, you can get this play. I mean, I might overthrow it a little bit, but you can get this play to get past the cover four safety pretty easily. Um, and then, like I said, your underneath routes are, are really good too. Your A route and your B route, as you can see right there, they'll typically play the under route, and then the, and the over top route will be will be your better better selection. Like I said, this will be best against cover four. You really just have to wait until they get past the safety. Or just, you know, kind of as they're running past the safety, I should say. As you can see, that's uh, pretty much the look. Uh, but you don't want to throw this. Um, you know, you don't want to wait for them to get past. The safety that you're really, that you're really waiting for this, for this corner to get past is not the safety that's closest to him. It's the safety that's in front of him. Because he's the one that can stop it. So once you throw away from that... You know, it's pretty much just running away from the uh, <laughs> running away from the the safety that's trailing anyway. Next up, we got the PA Power O. This is going to be best against cover two and man. Ready. So whether it's a man coverage or a cover two, all I want to do is streak the B route, and it's just going to create a huge throwing window for the A route. I mean, that's essentially all you're really doing. You just you got your low, which is your fullback. I typically want to uh, to motion him to the sideline a little bit. Uh, for a couple reasons. One, I mean, he'll, he'll draw the attention of the cornerback a little bit more. And two, he'll just create a bigger throwing lane, which is essentially my goal when it comes to Olsen anyway. Olsen also is, uh, I mean, not him as a player, but the route, for whatever reason, is just destroying man coverages uh, for the most part. As far as um, the RB route as well, I mean, that's really going to be lit best left to cover threes if they don't cover the flats and you're going to want to put a better running back at that position next up we got the pa spot this plays best against cover two man and cover two zone all you're going to do is you're going to put the b route on a streak motion out the running back and that's your setup you're typically trying to create a throwing lane for olsen but a lot of times especially in cover three the running back will be left open underneath as my man fumbles there just a really consistent play against man as well as zone. Like I said, if they leave this guy open underneath, this is the play. So it really depends on what that cover two cornerback does. Next up we got the stretch alert X looky. This is a good stretch run, but you always have the option of holding X and throwing it back to the receiver, whether it's a zone coverage. I don't I don't really think it's gonna work well against man. But to me, they're both good options. You have probably a consistent five to ten yard run from the run, here go, here go. or you can get even more from the throw if they're not covering that up well enough. Um, you can really make a big play there as well. So just hold the X button. All you have to do is hold the X button once the play starts. And uh, like I said, the run's really good. I mean, you get a really good run. It, it's really a ten yard play either way. See, we can get you know we're just consistently getting 10 yards down the field pretty much every time no matter what our decision is next up we got the fl dive so basically all i'm going to do i'm going to find out which side has more defenders and maybe it don't work hold on hold on a minute hold on a minute there we go backing them up backing them up sticking to them like glue just as i thought and we're gone. We throw it on the run a little bit there. And we get that easy touchdown. So, obviously, you know, it, it works best to the receiver on this side. So, obviously, you know, works a little bit better to the, uh, the, the receiver on the opposite side. If you see here, he isn't really this, this particular receiver. I guess he gets gone, but it's not nearly just the window of the other side. I don't know exactly why that is, but that's why you just want to flip it. Make sure you're running it to this side. 
so that's your you're, you're seeing um, you know that defender just stays that that cover three corner just stays down there extra and I, I messed that up <laughs> I didn't mess that catch up so let's go ahead, let's flip it okay so let's just take away you know give ourselves as much blocking as possible and I'm gonna go ahead and take off over here but it's not gonna matter because the ball's going over there slide a hand buddy <laughs> So easy, easy formation for cover three touchdowns. Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. This play feels like a stretch, um, and a lot of times it can really, you can really take this inside or outside. Um, it kind of curves you towards the inside, but you can really take it however you want. This is one of the first plays I've ever put out in this channel. So let's go ahead and let's do that again. Said, I'm, I'm just just taking a wide angle. It's that simple. Ready. Just a really consistent run play. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. Ready. Step, ready. So, ready. same setup. We're going to put him on an out route, Next smart back. route him, then motion him out. And then we got our cover three play. So, let's see if he stays home again. Yes, he does. They say he stays way more alert. And now we basically we're gonna have a lot of cover three touchdowns out of this formation. So that's really it. Just out route, smart route, then motion out. In that order. And it will it will glue that cover three cornerback to him. Or just bombing it up away from the defender. A little catch and run. No problem. Pass leading away. You can also motion this guy over and put him on a drag. I find that's a a good look. Then I'm just gonna streak Olsen and that's it. So you have a really a really good play here Also, you see my, my receiver actually he actually got in front of the man coverage They don't typically get in front of man coverage just like that So once again block block the running back Take away that play action streak the tight end put Samuel on the drag we have to motion him over And Samuel really got caught up there. But you know what? We're gonna have a home run here. <laughs> So, uh-oh, 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 so close, man. I don't, phew. I don't know what that coverage was, but he had that. So, once again, bringing him over. Putting him on a, you know, put tight on a streak. Drag the motion receiver. And he's getting caught up in the trees, but he's getting open, and I messed it up again. <laughs> Next up, we got the quick toss. Nothing to this, just line up and go. This play was really glitchy back in the day. They actually had to slow it down a little bit. You don't, you can see the animations a little bit slower, but it's still a really good run. Uh, still a really good run play. But it's still a really good run play. Um, I mean, it's obviously, you know, the, the the blocking's not always on point. Oh, and I just split two defenders. As you can see, I take it to the house. But like I said, it's still a good run play. It's still a lot of people that like to run that formation. Next up, we got the strong tight. It's the halfback toss. So this play, no real adjustments. Uh, you just run it as is, and sometimes you gotta kick it up inside like I did there. It's not always gonna be op to the edge, uh, but you know it's definitely uh, you definitely have uh, the opportunity for that. That's typically where you're gonna gear the play. You're typically gonna want to run it uh, outside. Let's go ahead and let's rock this a couple of times. Um, like I said, that 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 was you know I could have had a bigger play there, but my fullback just couldn't decide who wanted to block. So, but I'll take it. I'll take ten yards. There we go. Now 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 he's getting now he's getting on. Uh, ultimately, this was a really overpowered formation a couple years back. It's not quite that anymore, but it's still a really good formation that's somewhere hidden in the game. Next up, we got the halfback counter weak. Ready. Let's go ahead. We're gonna, you know, we're just this is a single read setup. You know what I'm saying? We're reading that defensive end on the left, depending on what he does, depending on where we go. If he stops and hesitates, we, we wait for that block and we go outside. If he if he crashes outside, we go inside. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple. It's a real easy read. These counter plays are real OP this year. Like I said, I'll just wait for that blocker and he'll spring me for another 20 30 yards. <laughs> So this is a top-notch run formation right here. And they're do they're sending that double blitz, but you know what? That double safety blitz, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat it outside anyway. Still a good play though. 
So he's crashing. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna wait for him to get driven out of the play, and then we're gonna go outside. It's that simple. Like I said, this is just this is incredibly money blocking. You know what I'm saying? This is just a really cheesy blocky setup. One of the best ones in the game, easily. Next up, out of the strong H wing, we have the PA boot X shot. This particular play is really good against cover one, uh, cover one defenses. Now, all you're gonna do really is you're gonna put this X route on a smart route. And you're gonna see how quickly he gets up the sideline uh, to really beat the hell out of that defense. It actually works so good that it can actually work against cover two man as well. Um, because a lot of times it'll beat that before it even gets there, but uh, that's typically in other formations I can't say that it does that this well in this formation um, But you know, like I said, it's just it's, it's pretty much just a home run every time Your underneath routes are pretty good as well obviously not as good against man coverage these are more the zone the zone coverage plays If you guess wrong and you accidentally get a zone uh, some of these other routes like the B um, are going to be really, you know, they're going to they're gonna bail you. So you typically want to try to run this against man coverages, but if you don't get them, like I said, the B route's probably going to be the best thing uh, on, the, uh, on the field for you. And you can also drag the other tight end under the B route if you prefer. I'd say that the fullback isn't really doing too much. So I would say put that fullback on a pass block, put A on the drag. And now you have, um, you know, something that'll pull down the coverages, and it's just going to be a really good. Route. That was a real tight window right there. Still worked out though, but yeah, you really have two good options in the events. I mean, the A route will work in in, uh, in a man coverage as well, but um, you have some really good options if you, no matter what the what the coverages you picked. Although I think the fullback was doing a better job of pulling down that that drag. Next up, we got the stretch alert X looky. You know, it's a decent, a good, a good stretch play, obviously. Um, you know, that's the basis of the play, but you also can throw back if you just hold X after the snap. Um, you know, this is how these new plays are run. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there, I actually hesitated. I was, I was really staring at that receiver. Yeah, you really got to diagnose a pre-snap, what you're going to do with the ball. But the run play is really solid, and obviously, um, you know, you have an added dimension if you, if you decide to take the pass. But it's a really good run play. I said sometimes that run play you gotta take it inside. I mean sometimes that's where it's at. It's not always to the edge. I'd like to hit that receiver or hit that receiver one time, but I'm just getting such good blocking <laughs> going up the field. It's just like I don't really feel the need. I mean the run play is so good. I don't really feel the need to have to, to go. You know what I'm saying? Like this just feels like a a, 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 a nasty stretch play. <laughs> But like I said, the receivers there just, you know, obviously it's an extremely secondary option the way this block is going down. So once again, I mean, we're, this is just, a, this, this run play is pretty guaranteed. But like I said, hold X. I want to get a scenario where I can hold X, throw it to that receiver, as I say right there. I mean, I have nothing but space. So you could run this play all game. This could be a bread and butter play right here. Next up, out of a strong tight, we got the PA tight end cross. This play right here, I mean, you're really just trying to work the fullback against the uh, against the X route. That's the idea. I mean, it's going to work best against zones. I don't really think it's going to work too well against man. In a man scenario, you probably got to drag the A route. You know what I'm saying? It's probably the best you can hope for, uh, which I can tell is going to be man. So <laughs> that's why I did it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, these, these crossing routes don't really beat man like they used to. So that's pretty much it. Those are pretty much your, your opportunities. You can see right here, once again, we got that man. Like I said, it just doesn't beat it. So I had I, I did I neglected to make my drag adjustment and it cost me. <laughs> so it's that simple. Once again, we got man. Gonna have to take that drag. That's pretty much all I got. On this particular play anyway. Oh no. Ooh. As far as zones go, the fullbacks are gonna are gonna work. You know, this guy right here is gonna catch a lot underneath. Cover twos, cover threes, cover fours. He's gonna be a good catch and run candidate. And then obviously, like I said, uh, Thomas. But I'd say the best way to run it is just always have that drag, um, just in case you need it. Like right there, I tried to get, I couldn't get it out off the play action. So you know that was a pretty nasty heat. But let's go let's move on. Next up, out of the strong twins, over we got the verticals, PA verticals. Ready, 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 gun, gun. 
So all you really can do here is put this put this tight end on a drag. That's pretty much it. You don't really have a lot of other options. Um, but you know, the idea is you got some crossing routes. And they didn't even catch it. I thought he caught that. But you can see how you have um, you know you have a a pass play. You don't have a ton of great pass plays, but you have one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is this is pretty much it. And like I said, it's a pretty good one. Essentially, mostly going to be running out of this formation. You should catch your opponent off guard when you do decide to pass. Next up, out of the strong twins over, we got the power O. It's another really good run play um, with an overpowered formation. I mean, you have I think you have two tackles to one side, and that's essentially what makes this play so so devastating. Um, you know, but it's uh, I think you have a tackle in the tight end spot too. I mean, it's, it's a crazy formation. Uh, this here, I thought it disappeared out of last year's game. Next up out of the gun bunch. <laughs> Next up out of the gun bunch, we have the spacing switch. So this right here, I, I typically want to either put this uh, X route on a slant so he can be a man beater. I like the motion out the B route um, because you can see, I mean, he'll just, he, he didn't really have the space there that he would have if I motioned him out. So typically, depending, unless it's like a cover two, I'll typically motion him out. If it's a man coverage, he won't really beat it anyway. But you can see, motioning him to the side gets him a little bit more space. Still gets lit up by Keanu Neal, but you can see he's getting up the sideline a little bit better. But if you leave him in, you're just kind of reading what's he going to do. Like right there. He... So you pretty much have him. I mean, your best man beater is going to be the slant. And then you're, 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 oh, you have all these other routes out here. If it's a cover three, especially cover four, he's going to get outside. But it's just a really, you know, you'll steal yards this way easy. You're not going to hit any home runs or anything, but it's a really good play. I like the motion snap them too. As you can see right there. I mean, sometimes accuracy is an issue right there. I only got five because of the accuracy. But, you know, and I don't even have to pass block the running back because this gets open so quickly. I don't really have to worry about it. And then right there, anytime it's they all sit, you know, man sits on the zone. So anytime you have a man coverage and these guys, you know, they'll just start sitting on these routes. That's when the man coverage comes into play, as you can see right here. They're all just sitting down, and you got that big play over the top of man. So, so left side, man. Right side, you got all zones. Uh, this B route will get open under anything but cover two. Looking like it's not a cover two. I had a tight end right there, too. But obviously, this is my better athlete for a possible catch and run scenario, so I'm going to go there. Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. Run it wide. Run it wide outside. This play might be best run outside as opposed to like your normal inside zone. You can see, I mean, I get a good, pretty good angle to get outside to the edge, and that's pretty much all you gotta do. He's gonna let us run this a few times. Like I said, I mean, there's, you know, scenarios we might have to turn it back up in sooner. But ultimately, it's his best run to the outside. I don't find the in, I don't find the inside zone is as good as this run. Um, just as long as the blocking sets up, you can see right there. I'm getting chased by a guy that's going to mess everything up. <laughs> but it's it's a pretty consistent play. You don't really have a ton of um, you know opportunity for loss. A lot of times, you can just out sprint people to the sideline without worrying too much about taking losses. And then, like I said, if the blocking sets up like this, you got a really good play outside. Next up, we got the inside switch. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna streak the um, the B route. Um, I guess a man like this, you see how like the the coverage really gets you know bunched up there. So that, that's how the running back got open. But he's typically gonna be better against cover two and a cover uh, cover three. As you can see right there. I mean, he just gets you know some really good space to the outside. You can motion him over. This is really just to create space, though, for Olsen. If I if I motion him out, um, it, it forces the uh, the outside corner to make a, a much quicker decision. The running back has his best opportunity getting open right where he is. You can see right here. It's a man coverage, but he's so far behind. So sometimes you can catch that and turn it upfield if you have a faster receiver. Um, but you'll definitely get the best results from cover three to the to the running back route. Um, you just gotta catch and run up the field. Maybe make a dude miss. And uh, there you go. Good play. The other side is a streak because I just want to, it's, it's similar to the B route. You're going to have catch and runs over there as well. But obviously, 
you know, you want to make a determination which side you're going to pre-snap. Because you don't really want to, um, to have to make that decision be scanning the whole field if you don't have to. So try to make that decision pre-snap. Next up, we got the stick. All I'm going to do is block the running back, put the B on a streak, and that's it. I'm just going to read if the B route's there. I'm not the B route. I'm at the Y on the streak. If the B route's there, just take it. Easy catch and run. Um, you can see right there, made a guy miss and I make a really big play. That's really the only two reads. Is the, uh, like I said, pass block the running back. You, know, you can even block Olsen because he's not really doing anything. But I'm just reading B and uh, X. One of the two should be open pretty much every time. You can see right there, that must have been like some all-out zone blitz. As you can see, they just kind of, you know, but I'm splitting the field in half. There's no real other read going on here. So, you know, pass block as much as you like. I mean, you could always put Olsen on an end route or something if you want to give yourself another route. But I don't find it's necessary. Like I said, these routes should get open every time. There we get a nice man route. He really just juked him out of his shoes for a big play. So that's going to be your, you know, your man, your man beater. Your cover three beater is going to typically be the, um, there's another man, uh, typically going to be um, the underneath route, the flat, which also gets open under a lot of cover twos based off of what cover two it is. But um, you're just like I said, just watching that route. If it's there, take it. I should have I should have took it a little bit quicker. Good good receiver for a catch and run. More. So like I said, I can just line up and throw it too. I don't have to like do all the adjustments unless I need the pass blocking because it's a quick replay. As you can see, we make another dude miss and we're going to the house again. I don't think we went to the house the previous time, but it was it was really close. So don't discount those short throws. Next up, we got the verticals. Here, I'm going to put X on a drag, motion out this receiver, and that's it. That's all I got to do. The B route will get open underneath coverages a lot of times, really quick and easy. Your drag is going to be the check down. It'll come open in this area after all the after all the um, the zones are vacated. And then you can see if you have a cover one man or cover zero, you can have a big play up the sideline to the uh, the wheel route. That's going to be your best man beater as well as the uh, the drag. So here we go. I can tell I'm going to have RB. Like I said, there's too much there for, for you know, those two routes are too close together for the, the defender to choose. So whichever defender that the the, the, um, the user defender chooses, you pretty much hit the other one inside. One of those should be open pretty much every time. So like I said, right here, just waiting for him to clear. And then you have a real easy shot over the middle. Next up, we got the Z spot. I'm just going to put the B route on a streak, and then I'm reading A, which is open right away here. Um, if he's open, I'm going to take him. If he's not, the B route will be open over the top of him. Not the B route. I mean the RB route. But either way, like I said, if it's there, you know, like I said, there, he's not, so i got to hold it. It was a bad throw. It's typically going to be a little bit further outside, so I tried. I meant to say the RB route. We're just playing the A versus the RB route. So like I said, right here, it's a blitz. You know, we're just going to take what we can get. And if it's not him, he's going to be the RB route. RB route will be better against man and cover two. Although that's a cover three, but just the way that it, it worked out, you know, with the spacing, it was it was perfect. So made that play. And then obviously the, uh, the check down or the... Uh, except we got the Z spot and go. All I'm going to do is streak the B route. That's it. Now you got your high, low. A, if you see it right away, take it. Uh, you know, that'll be good against cover three, although I got lit up. Cover three, cover four. Your um, your RB route will be a, a man and a cover three beater, or cover two beater and cover three beater. Like right there, that was a cover three, but they, they must have been in hard flats. So it's really just, that's pretty much the play. It's just those two receivers. You split the field in half. The other side doesn't even matter. You can even block the running back if you want to. Next up, we got the Bucks Z spot. So here I'm going to put uh, X on a flat, B on a streak. It's optional if you want to motion on the running back or not. The only real man beater here is the A route. Um, as you can see, I mean, it'll also beat cover two. As you can see, that motioning out the running back pulled the zone coverage down. Um, that's also, Olsen's also a good cover two and three play. You can see right there, I mean, motion out that running back can really get him open the flat, but I didn't throw the ball quick enough for a catch and run, but he still got some yards. But, um, you know, to me, the best way is to motion this guy out into a, into a flat route. 
onto a uh, not a flat route into a um, you know like I say even there it helped really help pull coverage on the cover too better as well. So I'll do this one more time. Like I said, I'm, uh, the other side is pretty good too. I mean, if it's a cover three or cover four, you can see how that dude just drops off and he's just wide open. So remember that route. But the, the only, I mean, the one route over him doesn't do anything. The uh, this, the curl or the uh, whatever whatever route wise running is not a good route at all this year. Next up, we got the halfback quick face. Just motion over one of these, either the receiver or the tight end. It doesn't matter. But the tight end won't pull an extra defender over in man coverage. And that just kind of creates a, a bunch, a little bit of a, a, a better blocking setup. You know, in a scenario, I mean, obviously here we got a safety dropping into the box, so that might make things a little bit more difficult because he's coming. But uh, obviously, like I said, the blocking just holds up. I just get outside of it. Here's another safety blitz. Like I said, I should be able to get outside of it, though. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't matter. Like I said, he gets inside and then I, I I get outside of it, but not as much not as much success as the previous play. But a good inside a good run. Next up, we got the four verticals. It works against cover three. You know, what I'm saying this is strictly a cover three concept. Um, you can say I mean it wouldn't work against man necessarily, but uh, <laughs> you can see I mean there's there's something to be had here. As, as the, uh, I don't know if that was a man or not. Let's go and let's watch the replay. I thought that was, the cover through the inside route is getting open. And against what I'm guessing is man coverage, the, the underneath routes get open. <laughs> so it was even worse on the other side. I mean, like, that's even worse. So obviously this is a pretty glitchy play. Let's go and let's do that again. I said I got my, got my cover two. I mean, <laughs> This is a play, it shouldn't be working this easy, but I got my cover two out there. So here's a man coverage, so we'll see if that B route beats it. Or that X route. I mean, this is just super cheap. Holy crap, at least. So I'm just gonna go put that dude on that route. And that should help pull for that cover two. A little bit sooner. So like I said, right there, I mean, he didn't catch it, but you can see he had the play. So one more time, like I said, I'm, it's a table route because of this, but it's just, you just put him on an out route. That's all you really need right there. And like I said, he'll get past the cover two if you pass, lead him outside. Although the cover two is probably the least successful this will be. Against cover three, I find this is more successful um, to the to the X route. As you can see, he just falls behind and gets behind the coverage. Similar to what the cover two should be doing. Uh, but it doesn't really work that way. So like I said, just kind of waiting. You know, I can, I can pass lead it outside, although it's not the best throw. But you can see how it beats cover three underneath. So it's a really glitchy play. Like I said right there, I mean, there, I just, <laughs> he just kind of bit inside. I just, uh, I threw it too early, but it still worked. And probably the best cover just works against his man. As you can see, I mean, he just kind of gives the inside lane up. <laughs> and you can see it's just, I mean, that's just too easy. It's going to be that way on both sides also. Can't believe how easily they give up that inside lane. Like I said, the X and square route, especially you just kind of throw it in the break, and it's just kind of there. <laughs> so, so against man coverage, really simple. Man one or two, doesn't really matter because the safeties are going to be way further back. And like I said, they just kind of jet inside like that. So super easy, real, real easy play. So one more time. Like I said, you just kind of time it as he gets, as he turns up. You know what I'm saying? Like the cornerback definitely hesitates as he goes outside. Let's do that one more time. Let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I say he's just woof on burners, on burners. <laughs> you know what I mean? So super easy play. Holy crap, Ola. Next up, we got the PA jailbreak screen. Obviously, there's nothing else to this, uh, but you know I don't really care for the screens with the running backs, but uh, this jailbreak screen's pretty good. Ready. Ready. As you can see, we're getting. Um, you know, we have blocking at the point. I get a, as I get a loss there. Like I said, they're not super consistent necessarily, but I, I get good blocking at the point from the running back. A lot of times with the with the halfback ones, I feel like you don't necessarily. You kind of get left out to dry at the quarterback spot. You, you can't really get good accuracy because you're fading away. 
For this year, at least the running back will take on the initial blocker, and it'll it'll let way for the uh, for the jailbreak for the screen. So you can see, um, to me, the jailbreak screen like is is one of the better screen plays. But typically, I don't like the halfback ones. Might catch your opponent off guard a little bit. Um, but you can see right there. I mean, look at that. That's just for the most part. I mean, like I said, not necessarily the most consistent, but when you get it, it's explosive. With this formation as glitchy as this one is, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just have... Oh, I tried to cut back in my blocking. I don't know why, <laughs> but, but you can see a pretty good play there. And boom. Like I said, we're just kind of... Oh, I, I gotta use my blocking better. That's about, about it. Next up out of the shotgun double stack, we have the RPO alert screen. I find it's best to run stuff like this just to spread the field. I mean, you can run like a regular IPO. I got one defender on the right side, so obviously it's going to be a good option to throw it to the B route, even though I didn't I hit the button. What the hell? Obviously, you know, it's to me, it's best to run these type of plays to spread the field for the inside runs. Um, you know, I don't necessarily want to throw it to the screens unless, unless I see an, an advantage. Uh, typically, if I have more receivers than defenders is the best way to go um, but ultimately I think that it's just you know I just like spreading the field for the runs except we got the dagger just put the A on a uh, streak put the Y on a on a drag and that's pretty much your play right there let's wait for this B route to get open outside you know he'll, he can get some big catch and runs I don't know that was a bad throw though here we got double safety blitz. I don't really think this play has too much of a great man beater option. I would say if anything, put the um, put the uh, the X route on a comeback route so you have that option. So now he's now he's a good check down. Just put him on that comeback route. He's a, he's gonna like I said, if it's a man, you know he'll come back to that. That was actually bad timing by me, but it still worked out. Because ultimately, these crossing routes don't really beat man too well anymore. So here we go. We got that, you know, just hit that comeback route. That wasn't, because of how close I am to the sideline, it's not even a really good comeback route. It's more like a, like a hangman route, which is not not that effective. <laughs> so, But ultimately, like I said, against zones, this is the play I'm going for anyway. Uh, which can be a good catch and run type of play. Next up, we got the level sail. This play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I'm getting a big play, but it's definitely... Ooh, I think it's fumbled. It's definitely a really good play, though, down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs on the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously all these checkdowns on the right side. One of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> one of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. You don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater. Uh, then just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up, we got the PA shot cross. Just gonna streak A, put Y on a drag, put X on an in route, and then smart route them. Pass block the running back. I forgot to do that, but that's pretty much all you gotta do to make this a really big play. It's pretty much any zone play, any zone coverage should have a problem with that crossing route. Your opponent will most likely follow the inside cross. At that point, you'll have the high low with Y and the uh, the X route coming across. Will really be the big play. Like I said, they'll leave the center of the field. That'll. That's why I have this guy coming in late. So at that point you'll just be you'll just be killing them with paper cuts, which um, you know it's just as effective as anything else. So like I said, oh that was a great throw. <laughs> Let's just throw that in the bleachers cam. Let's do this one more time. So you can tell that I run this play quite a bit, as you can see how quickly I can do it on sticks. Uh, I could do this with a blindfold. So moving on. Next up, we got the dig and go. Strictly cover two play. I'm just going to put the B on a streak. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm just going to wait for that outside cornerback to react to the uh, 
the zig route, and then he'll be open underneath it. You can block the running block the running back as well. Um, if they don't do a mid third adjustment, obviously the guy the A route will be open over the middle. But this is you know in theory that they're going to be doing that, which is why I'm pass leading it outside to this guy. But obviously if they don't do that, he's just streaking over the middle. So there's obviously a big play there against standard cover too. And the uh, the check down is the zig route. The, the zig route is actually pretty good. The running back's a decent check down too, if you don't if you don't take him out of the coverage. So still a good play, just for like last year. I like to also sometimes drag the uh, the X route, so he'll come open underneath. If I'm like I said, if I'm looking for a series of check downs, he'll come open underneath the running back. That was a bad throw because I was moving, but you get the idea. You got then you got the high low with the. Uh, with the running back's route. So let's do this one more time. So I'm just take the easy check down, you know what I mean? Although you won't necessarily need it against cover two, but if you guess wrong, if you guess that it's a cover two and it's not, it's cover three, then obviously you wanna to go to your series of check downs. Is the drag under. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick that, but first I really wanna make sure I got all my guys in the right places. And I'd say that Larry Fitzgerald is in the perfect spot because he's not really gonna do anything here. His job is really just to pull coverage anyway. So I'm going to pick, uh, you know, this guy right here, I'm going to put my fastest receiver here over Hakeem Butler. We'll go Isabella. Um, I got my running back here, which is really nice. I mean, that's they're going to be my check down anyway, so that's going to be like the perfect guy for that. So you can see I only really have three wide receivers. It looks like I have like a five wide, but I have my tight end here, um, you know, at the uh, in the inside spot, which is fine because I want somebody kind of reliable and uh, durable anyway. So let's go ahead and let's pick that play on the other side. We're just going to go random, um, you know, I, you, you might see like random nickels because when you're going to see, you know, if you're waiting on the defensive side to pick plays, you're going to see a three wide, one tight end, one, you know, running back. So to start, you'll probably see a lot of random nickels. That's where most people base defenses are based in anyway. Um, I might kick it up a notch later and go back to dollar because, you know, a lot of people are going to do that. If you run this play enough, and there's no real reason to stop running this play. It's that type of play. We can pretty much run it all game. Uh, but if you run this play enough, people are going to start getting smaller and smaller in their packages to try to cover the, the way the field is going to be spread. But for now, like I said, let's go ahead and let's pick random nickel. So this play right here, I mean, it's to me, it's just designed perfectly. I don't, I don't really care what the defense is. This play is going to have a route for it. I'm typically starting by staring at the RB route. As you can see right here, I mean, he, I think that was a cover three. He just kind of got open underneath it. So, I mean, you essentially have your gun bunch verticals um, set up on the inside. And then on the outside, as we got, I mean, this cover three play right here, by the way. If you get cover threes, you get, oh, and I missed. <laughs> oh, man, I, I was thinking touchdown there. I can't believe Clay actually made somebody miss. Let's go ahead and let's do that again. Uh, but like I said, I mean, you have your, your RB route for cover three underneath, but then you also have the Y route here, um, which is going to get open quite a bit. Uh, that was a really tight window, but I still snuck it over his head. So, I mean, like I said, I can run this play pretty much the entire game without without any issue. Um, but like I said, I mean, if they're going to, if that guy is going to be, beat outside like that to the, to, the, to the boundary for the cover three underneath, you can see I have a much bigger play over the top. Um, so like right here, this looks like it might be like a cover, a cover, uh, cover two. Uh, I'm trying to get this guy over here. As you can see, that's a tight window, but I wanted the bigger play. I mean, you, the drag was open underneath. Like I said, pretty much everything on this play is going to get open. I used to run this a little differently. I used to put B on a streak. I used to put Fitzgerald on a drag. And you can still do that if it's a cover two. I find that that might, you know, that might still be the best way to run that. But they patched that. It wasn't very successful last year. And now this year, it runs it runs really well just like this. You don't have to make any adjustment at all. You can run it as is. All I like to do is motion out Kirk here, motion out the, uh, the RB route. And I basically have the exact same setup as the verticals. But I also have um, a setup from a play that's not in this playbook. That play is out of the gun tray wide flex, the PA crossers that I put out previous year. Basically, what I did with this play is all I did was put um, A on a streak, uh, B on, a, you know, leave B alone and put Y on a uh, drag, and it would create a lot of one play touchdowns to the B route right here. So I essentially have that and the verticals play all in the same play. And you can see, I mean, between the A route, the B route, and what Fitzgerald's doing, you pretty much have all three of those routes. So, um, you know, if, like I said, the only difference is Fitzgerald's out kind of far, but he's still going to have that effect. So, like I said, this play, you have two of the best concepts in the game, in my opinion, in the exact same play. So how could you lose? Um, like I said, as far as the reads go, everybody gets open. 
I mean, your B is going to be your most consistent check down route. Um, you know, I just took that there to whatever. So, like I said, you can see that the A, the B, and the, and the X route have that setup where the bunch has the vertical setup. So you have two of the better concepts in the game all in one play. So, you know, all I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to motion this guy out uh, because that's the same thing I do in the verticals play. And you pretty much, I mean, if you, it, the way that this spreads the field, pretty much everybody gets open. As far as the reads go, like I said, pretty much everybody gets open. If it's a cover one man or a cover zero, if it's cover zero, I mean, you can block clay. You know I mean, if somebody's sending the, the house on you and you need, you don't, obviously you don't have a running back, um, that's, the, that's the best thing you can do. You can't block any of the receivers, though, but you can block the tight end still. So that'll give you a little bit of, uh, you know, extra blocking if somebody runs out something a little bit heavy. Uh, and that route, you don't, I mean, it is a good route. I don't want to get rid of it, but you can live without it if you have to. U ultimately, if somebody's running a cover zero, the RB route's going to be a home run anyway. So you're going to want that extra blocking. Um, but that's pretty much it. So, you know, like I said, as far as the reads go, if it's cover three, you have two really good cover three routes. The RB route steals outside really quick and easy. You can see how he's just going to get around the defense since I motioned him out. But also the... Um, you know, that's going to spread to the point where Clay is going to get open too against cover threes. So here, this looks like, if I'm going to guess, a cover two. Um, you know, once again, I mean, like I said, everything's going to get open. If it's a cover two, which that was, Clay's huge. He's going to be open, big against either coverage. Whether it's cover two, cover three, or cover four, it doesn't really matter. Clay's going to get inside, especially cover four because there's just so, you know, there's so little as far as coverage inside and cover fours that that's just going to be easy money. I don't really know what that coverage was, but it doesn't really matter. That's the thing. I don't, this, this play is so easy. You don't really have to read a defense necessarily. So here it looks like we have a cover one. Um, this outside route here is going to be best because obviously the inside route works too, but that's closer to the safety.